Hey guys, my name is Boris and I'm a computer engineering student at the Technical University of Berlin. And on this channel, I want to talk about things that I've learned and might bring you value, general educational topics and lifestyle ones. Today, we are continuing a little series on machine learning slash reinforcement learning theory. Last episode, we covered the multi-armed bandits. And today we are taking a look at Markov decision process, or for short, MDPs. I really recommend watching the last video on the bandit theory because it is an easier entry point and covers a few of the formalities and what policies are, for example. But without further ado, let's get to it. MDPs are the basis of reinforcement learning. Simply said, it describes a process where an agent is set in an environment and can take actions or make decisions. Based on those, the agent collects rewards. This means a MDP consists of states that are the representation of the world at a time step t. In this state, the agent can choose an action from a certain domain, for example to go north, east, south or west. Based on the action state pair, the agent will receive a reward or make observations and then receive a reward and then eventually move to the next state. So again, we have states, actions and rewards. Now those can all be continuous, but we will only work with discrete states, actions and rewards. The next very important thing is in a real world transitioning into a new state, the reward you receive and perhaps even the action selection are not deterministic, but have a certain probability. Imagine the following. Your agent is a plumber with a mustache. He is in this position here and he wants to go one step upwards. In the first initial state, for example S0, he wants to take the action A0 is equal to north or up. But he then slips and doesn't move into field 2, but moves into field 4. Now, don't get scared, the following will look worse than it is. I'll repeat myself a few times, so it hopefully makes more sense. Here you can see the formal definition of a Markov decision process. You might have seen this in your lecture. The graph and this mathematical representation are really the same thing, but the important thing to understand is the graph. This graph is not a state transfer graph like in automatons. This is an illustration which shows random variables and how they depend on each other. We, for example, have this variable S0 for the world's initial state, which is also probabilistic and unknown. This does actually make sense. Just imagine a robot that is placed somewhere in a room. How would the robot know where it was dropped? Then there is the state ST plus 1, which also has a certain probability of being the actual envisioned next state. Remember the plumber example. Receiving a reward is also probabilistic, and the selection of the action can theoretically also be, but this one actually is in most case deterministic. So your policy pi will definitely predict one next action to take based on the current state. This whole scary formula here is just the formal way of writing down all individual probabilities combined. Now for the graph. This probability, for example, which is the probability or rather the probability distribution of getting into state S1 when performing action A0 in state S0 is represented by these two arrows. It shows state S1 is conditionally dependent on the variables S0 and A0 and S1 is not conditionally dependent of actions that happen in the future. This is also how our real world works. The next action is not dependent on future ones. Otherwise, our current concept of time would be not really true and all over the place. But yeah, let's continue and make our lives a bit easier. Up until now, the time step t not only is used to illustrate the order of actions or states, etc., but can also be viewed as an absolute dependency of time. For example, a rocket has to land on a planet at a specific time. Those are then called non-stationary MDPs. But in most cases, the absolute time is not really important. So we often just have a stationary MDP with always one transition and reward probability distribution per state. 
to go even further. We often don't even really care about the actual probability distribution of the rewards we could get in state S when choosing action A, but we just always use the average reward, which is then notated like this with the big R. So, to recap, we have states, which describe the world in a specific moment. Then we have actions that are deterministic and can be selected from a domain. The probabilities of entering state ST plus 1 when choosing action AT in state ST are independent of time. For example, always when you are in the same state as and want to go left, you could have a 90% chance of actually doing so and 10% chance of slipping and going right. Finally, we have rewards that are dependent on the state and the action chosen. We can have multiple different rewards with certain probabilities, but we really only care about the average reward. Now, all this is nice and cool, but this is just the definition of a problem setting. What would this mean practically? As you can probably imagine with such general definitions, there are multiple ways of defining it for a specific case and there are different goals you want to achieve in your specific case. But if we look at such a stationary and discrete Markov decision process, on a simple level, all the necessary probabilities are just simple tables. This means you would have a table for P of S0 or it could simply be one deterministic starting state. You would have a table for the transition probability when starting in S equal 1, for example, which could look something like this. You would then have multiple such tables for each state S, and they will tell you the probabilities of getting to S prime when choosing action A. But you don't need multiple tables like such. You can also store them in a tensor or all in one thought through table layout. But I think that would be very messy. For example, imagine again this setting here, and you can go north, east, south, west. If you now start at position 1, you can go for example east and land on field 2, but will succeed with only 85%, and the other 15% will split up to the other options. In this case, the only other option is that you land on field 4, so that would be 5%, or to crash into the west wall and the north wall which would let you not move at all and come out to be 10% of actually staying in the same place. We'll get to that example more in depth in a bit. You'll then also have a table with the average rewards. Again, those are tables that can be stored in any format. The goal of your algorithm is then to find the perfect policy. So to optimally decide which action A to take in the state S. Of course, optimally always depends on your definition and then also on parameters, but everything at its time. We'll finish this video with a little example exercise, which will require us to write down explicitly the probability and reward tables we just looked at for this 3x3 three three maze that defines the respective Markov decision process. And here you can also see the rules for the MDP. You can pause the video whenever you want and try to think about transition tables for a few states yourself. It shouldn't be too hard to get the hang of it. So let's start with the distribution of the initial state and rewards. Since they are deterministic, we can say the following for the initial state and reward. The mathematical expression can be simply put into a table with one column or row. For the state transitions, let's look at one starting state together and I'll then show you the probabilities for every other state, so you can compare it if you want. Let's look at state 2. If we move north, we have a 85% chance of actually doing so. But moving north is not possible since there is a wall, so moving up will keep us in state 2 with a 85% chance. Now we have 15% left to split up among the other options we can slip off to. So 5% for each state, 1, 3 and 5. All other states have a 0% chance of being reached. Now for action east, we again have 85% to succeed and land in state 3. 5% to land in state 5, 5% to land in state 1 and 5% to slip into a wall and not move at all. Now I think you get the point. For actions south and west, the probabilities look the following. So if you want to finish the same process for the other states, feel free to do so. But it's always the same approach. Here would be the solutions. Okay, you've also made for this video. 
Today we focus on defining and understanding Markov decision processes. We took a look at the probability and rewards tables that are the foundation for Markov decision processes in general, especially for model-based ones. And we'll get to know what those mean or what those are in a later video. But in the next one, we'll actually look at what optimality means, which will lead us to the value function and eventually to the first algorithm called value iteration and perhaps even Q iteration. All videos in this series will be in a playlist that you can click up here. If you have learned something or found this video interesting, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And with that said, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!